We will kick off today's episode with our guest speaker pitching why you should listen to our podcast and follow our journey. Let's get started, folks. The really cool thing about Green Roof Team, it's a highly diverse and interdisciplinary team that comprises of students not only just locally in the United States, but also like from outside the United States, such as myself, all coming together, focused on renewable energy and sustainability in our community. And that's exactly why you should listen to this podcast as they strive and develop together to become better versions of yourself and challenge themselves towards their goals. Welcome to an episode of Young Entrepreneurs with the Green Nerve team of Southern Illinois University Carbondale. We are a cross-university team of young, innovative minds positively impacting the landscape of SIU Carbondale through promoting and installing clean energy. Here, we are highlighting our team's activities and impact through our members, sponsors, and supporters, as well as discussing a new, interesting topic. So buckle up, because we are driving to a more sustainable future. Today, we're speaking with our team member, Hayne. Hayne, how are you doing today? Doing well, Nelson. How are you? Perfect. And fun fact, this is our second live recorded episode of the podcast. We're here in sunny Cleveland. It's a bit hot and humid today, so we have the windows nice and open, and it's a beautiful day. It is. It's a nice weather outside today. So, hey, you want to kick us off and talk about who you are, where you're at, what you're doing in life? Absolutely. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Hayne Tet Ong. I am a senior majoring in mechanical engineering and minoring in data science at Case Western Reserve University, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, so I'm an interna- international student here, and I am originally from Myanmar, uh, which is a country in Southeast Asia that is formerly known as Burma. So what I like to do during my free time is I like to go for a walk in the evenings and just vibe to my playlist on Spotify because I like walking and listening to music a lot. And I am also a huge food lover, so I do love eating a lot of food and any different type of food. Um, I'm also teaching myself how to play the guitar in my free time and also like trying to learn how to do some sketches. So being here in Cleveland, have you been able to experience the life outside socially, even with COVID going on? Yeah, definitely I have experienced some social activities especially like after they have eased with the regulations. Uh, me and my friends would go kayaking, which we, we, I don't have a car because I'm an international student, but it's always an adventure to take the train and the bus to get to the place that we want to go kayaking and definitely worth it. Awesome, and uh, being around in the city, I know um, coming off the highways, there's quite a few like green space, this a uh, garden. Um, so what are, your, what are some of your favorite places around here to be able to walk in? What's there to do in Cleveland? I know the city has a bad, not the best reputation. Yeah, that's what people who haven't been to Cleveland would usually say. Um, but we do have a lot of fun stuff to do here. Especially in Yuma University, we have this beautiful place called the Wade Lagoon. It's always a nice time during the summer where you can just relax and chill. There's like little ducks over there. So like if you're a huge animal lover, then always come and see them it's also like lots of really well-known museum of art around here Um, also like Cleveland's really well known for their rock and roll hall of fame so if you've been to Cleveland if you ever come to Cleveland you definitely need to check that place out sounds awesome so with your guitar do you play a lot of rock and roll or It's, it's more of an um acoustic style well diving right in to your involvement with the Green Roof team. Do you want to talk a bit about how you became involved and how perhaps we met that led to this moment? Yeah, it's, it's, it's what's a really um, fascinating moment and interesting, I would say. Me and Nelson, we actually met at a conference hosted by Dominion Energy. It was the um, that diversity conference. Um, yeah, that's how I got to know Nelson. And fast forward, like, a semester or two, um, Nelson contacted me about this 
um, really good opportunity that he's um, starting called the Green Roof Team. And it's mainly focused on the um, renewability and sustainability on campus. And he talked about how uh, it has a huge diverse team of like students from different universities. And I thought it was really interesting because we were in the pandemic times where everything was unpredictable and we're all trying to overcome these challenges by trying to meet up with people online. And I think it's a good opportunity to, um, you know, start collaborating across the, uh, across the map, across the nation while being in the pandemic area. So a good time to try that out. Awesome, and I know that we met on the plane going to Richmond, then we met another yes. teammate that's with us, Edward. Yeah. Definitely we met on the plane first. That was like complete random, but it was a really fun moment too. I know like we both sat down and then we just began um, conversing. I know that was the first time I've ever been on a plane and not touched my phone or touched any gadget, but we just... Yeah, I, I think like it was the first time for me to like actually talk with a complete stranger and actually vibing with it. So it was definitely a, a good moment. Um, and also like it was when I found out that you were also into like renewable energy and that's also probably why we vibed. What made you interested about renewables? The biggest uh, thing that makes me interested about renewable energy is that, well, it's, it's clean. It's clean energy um, and it has, it's renewable. So like, it doesn't like actually run solid. You can, you can also get it. Um, well, nuclear is clean, but nuclear waste is not. And it's always like a struggle to dispose of them. So definitely like if you look forward into the future, then renewable energy is definitely the way to go and definitely the way that we can tackle our um, climate change and global warming problems, or at least like help tackle them. Um, also another reason why I'm too big in energy is because I believe having energy right now, it's a luxury. Not many communities have energy. Um, I mean, we just had a power outage today in our house, so a good 12 hour of power outage and it was not fun. Um, but also like back when I was a kid in my childhood, we were under military rule and the government wasn't that good with energy back then. Lots of um, power outages back at home. The crazy thing about our neighborhood, or like the entire country, I would say, is like whenever there's a power outage, everyone in the neighborhood would just like let out a huge sigh and a disappointment. Um, but then when the power comes back, probably like after a day or two, everyone would just like start clapping because they were so happy to get the energy to do whatever they want to do or like run their businesses. So it's like one of the moments that I could never forget in my life. And also I do think like having energy should be like a basic human need, a basic human right for everyone. Something that is expected instead of being given yeah. based on privilege. Yeah, exactly. So being in Cleveland, I know um, mentioning nuclear it's also much more socially acceptable for having wind, solar, hydro in a city area. So being in Cleveland, I've noticed quite a few uh, large wind turbines around. Yeah, we, our university actually own two wind turbines and also like really huge on renewable energy and sustainability on campus. So it's a pretty good opportunity to get into it too. With the different projects you have going on, do you see there's an application in developing countries to help increase accessibility to energy? Yeah, definitely. It would, it would be a big challenge to start a big school project right off the bat in developing countries because you definitely need more foundation uh, as well as like not only just on the technical side, but also like on the political side as well for to launch a big scale. So a small, a small scale project would be a good idea to like get things started and the trend right now is the solar energy because you can just set up a couple of solar panels for each household and make sure like they're sustainable on their, on their own for themselves in their community. So have it all be standalones so they're all in a sense off the grid potentially but then have that battery storage and and we also know like solar is much more reliable than say wind or hydro. Yeah, exactly. 
So if you have the political support, then do you see if there's any other obstacles in its way? Hmm. I, I think that usually political support is one of the, I think political side is one of the biggest challenges that we have because you definitely need a lot more bills and approvals to get going. Um, but once the, the um, approval is done, um, I think getting technical support would be a much easier path. And then you know, we're going to like choosing the right location and setting up the right foundation and distribution for the energy. Awesome, because I know um, when we compare the United States to the United Kingdom, in terms of progress in renewables, the United States will go up for a few years if we have a more progressive administration, but then if you have a more conservative, the progression goes down quite a bit in comparison. While in the UK, they had more of a steady growth. Um, for example, I know talking about like EVs, for example, a side a step, they had an ambitious goal a few years ago about how many EVs they wanted out. And even though when they got you the milestone deadline year, they were far from reaching the target number, they're still able to get much more out of it because they had such high um, goals and political support while in the US we're a, a step behind. I would say it's always a challenge to get everyone agree on the same idea to get everyone on board, especially if you have a huge uh, diverse group of people with different ideas and different beliefs. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you should stop pushing forward the agenda that you believe is right and that will save us and hopefully the future generations. Um, yeah. So as long as we can get the majority of the people on board, definitely we can ramp it up. Definitely I agree, and I know with our experience on campus at in Carbondale, we had administrative support and we had the approval support from the engineers on campus, so when it came down to it, we just had to focus on proving the feasibility and the safeness of the design. Do you want to go into a bit about like what you your role on the team and how you saw everything come together? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I work remotely for the team actually uh, because I'm in um, Cleveland, Ohio and Carbondale's like in Illinois. Yeah. Um, it's a bit far away. Yeah, it's a bit far away. It would, wouldn't be that easy to like go there in person. I wish, def I definitely wish I could go there in person to like get on board with the implementation because the photos look like actually fun. They're all enjoying it. Um, yeah, so my uh, my role I would say is would be into looking into different design options, um, alternative path for the designs that we want to implement in our projects, such as like the modular wind turbine. I was I know I was like looking into like, different options for like the blades and like the mounting systems. Yeah, I was mainly responsible for that. Um, yeah, honestly, I think I wish I could also get more involved, and I think it's on my end to um, socialize more with other members on the team. I know definitely the uh, project manager and myself were going to have a good focus on building more of a team relation throughout mm -hmm. this next year, have a fun few activities every week and help us become more connected. Definitely that was the one aspect of a virtual team that we didn't think the most about from the get-go, but over time, we began seeing the seeds and we have the feedback and we can now implement and go more in depth. Yeah, like this is something that we kicked off like a year ago around that time. So definitely there's like always, everything always has, an, has room for improvement and you know, it's only gonna go up from there. Definitely because a year ago, you only knew myself and Edward, and mm -hmm. we had maybe 18 others on the team. But then over time, we began interacting in small groups and finding other like niche ways of building a virtual team. Absolutely, yeah. Quite, a, quite interesting and new challenge, which is something that I know we enjoyed. And also an exciting one, one with lots of room for opportunity. 
So with the virtual team, did you see something that you liked that allowed us to collaborate more effectively? Uh, one thing that I liked about in our virtual meetings was that we would always have like a uh, a summary section right on the start. We kind of like summarize the things that we need to focus on that we need to accomplish, and then we would just like break break out into different groups to try to accomplish as much as we can, and then lay out the steps for the next time we meet. Um, all like the other steps that we need to do to progress the project, and then like at the end we would have like a um, like a recap of the meeting. Um, that was like good, especially like breaking out into different groups to work on it together. Because since you're working um, freshly, everyone has their own availability and schedule, so you don't know when everyone's like avail available or not, or how much they're available. So that was a really good thing. Um, I think like we could also encourage uh, meetings that's that could be like in a much smaller group like maybe two or three people that's assigned to accomplish one task that doesn't always have to be in Carbondale it could also be across different universities definitely there's so much we can do to improve upon and this next year we're going to do everything we can and make it a valuable experience for everyone and do as much as we can because at the end of the day, our goal and our mission is like focused on creating positive change on campus through understanding renewables and implementing it from our student level. Yeah, for sure. So being out in Cleveland and having, st having stepped foot in Carbondale, have you seen an impact that we created so far? The biggest impact I would say is that it is definitely possible for a group of students, a group of small students to start a team that would comprise of several team members that's all over the nation and hopefully could also be internationally as we expand. Yeah, communication is the biggest challenge that we always face in every situation, but that's one thing that the Green Move team has always been constantly trying to improve and trying to make sure everyone is con connected with each other and flow with the pro uh, project. Definitely, communication has always been something that I know myself and many others in Carmendo in one of our programs and clubs focused on was how do we not only communicate our ideas but be able to understand that the other person is receiving information. Um, like I know our friend Gustavo, he, uh, anytime he has a long discussion, he'll end it with saying, do you have any doubts? To not make sure that you're confident about what we talked about, that you understand what we did talk about. Um, so Hank, have you seen like any like small things that you've noticed over your time, like this communication and making sure that the person received what was said? Yeah, the Green Move team has been doing really well so far because at the end of like every discussion we kind of make sure everyone's opinion is heard because I always notice that you would ask around people who hasn't like uh, spoken about their opinions and making sure like they, they agree on the same thing and I've also heard this that um, communication is not dependent on the speaker but it's actually dependent on the listener so you could be trying to make a point about one particular subject but if the your audience doesn't actually you know have the same point of view or like is misunderstanding your point then it's not a good communication at all there's something missing along the way most definitely like this our stakeholders some individuals they're focused on just one perspective like the engineers on campus they just want to focus on is a turbine going to be safe and the structure is not going to fly off and they're not too worried about the social implications of it and how it's impacting students. They do care, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. they're all um, focused on their own perspectives and what they're involved with. It definitely, and that's why having an interdisciplinary team is always an advantage because you have experts in your own field trying to cover, cover up one another and making sure we're all like steadily going towards our goal. 
So uh, transitioning into like the entire big picture of the pandemic, do you have any thoughts surrounding it that you learned over the past several months? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like a lot of self-reflection sessions on my own, especially like during this whole pandemic era. Uh, and one thing that I have thought about a lot is acceptance. Um, sometimes acceptance can come on a fine borderline with negligence, but you need to notice like a huge difference. Like some situations are out of your control. There are things that you can try to control and there are things that you definitely cannot. And if there are times when there's a scenario that you cannot control, you just have to accept it. Doesn't mean that you have to neglect them though. You may accept the situation that's happening to you right now, but you don't necessarily have to accept the outcome that will be caused by it. If you're not um, completely satisfied with it, you can try to look for ways and strive to be better to change it. And that's why I, I think that acceptance is important, but don't let it turn to become negligence. Um, one thing that I have learned to accept is that everyone works in their own time frame. You don't always have to think that by the summer of my sophomore year, I should be accomplishing this, or by the summer of this specific time, or any time of your life, like you should be accomplishing something. You don't always have to compare yourself to someone that's posting a job update on LinkedIn. You don't always have to compare yourself to someone's life story that's on Instagram. That those are just snapshots of life. It's not who you fully are. And you always have to understand that you are continuously striving to become a better version of yourself and you definitely should do that and accept that you're working in your own time frame and don't compare your time frame with the others because in the end as long as you get to a goal that you have set to a goal that you want to accomplish at some point in your life then that should be a huge accomplishment i would say that is beautiful is that similar to um, the locus of control? Sorry? So the locus of control is similar to what you said where you can only control what you can, everything else you need to be able to, in a sense, manage and be able to move around? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the locus of control is definitely what kind of like plays a part into that. There's always stuff that's out of your control and it's much more stressful to be holding on to something that you can't control. It's like a tug of war that you're playing with that invincible thing that's playing around with you. If you just let go of the rope and try to walk a different path or try to find an alternative solution, it always feels much better. Most definitely, and I know for myself during the last several months, I the days I have used like less social media, seeing less snapshots of everyone else's high moments, I know I felt better my, about myself because I could focus on myself. Have you seen similar results? Yeah, I've also been trying to stay off the um, social media a lot. Um, social media, I am not constantly on it, but like. I go on it sometimes to check up on the news because that's how I get the news from back home. Um, but yeah, definitely staying off social media for quite some time brings kind of peace to my life, I would say. And then you can just play the guitar and have, cap off a good day. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I actually drew like a sketch, sketch today. I mean, I'm not good at drawing, but I just wanted to like try it out and I like, can improve myself. Um, it's not like the best representation of pictures, but like... <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Yeah, it's it's just like a, a draft sketch of like, um, how one would feel like when they're in despair or like 
the feeling of like falling from everything, like losing grasp. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll get better in as time goes by. So are all of the cubes buildings? Yeah, these are skyscrapers. And I guess the interpretation here is like there's one shoe on the one leg, um, but there isn't a shoe on the other. It's just like a sock. So it could mean that the person could actually be pushed off the building or they were initially trying to jump off but then accidentally they didn't want to jump off but accidentally slipped so a couple of things of interpretation here um, not the brightest scenario but something with lots of interpretation definitely i know from um, readings i've done recently being able to draw and express for yourself is a great way to build onto creative confidence and be able to go deeper into not only understanding who you are, but what your purpose is and how you see yourself reflected in the future. And being able to do something like drawing or play music or in general be creative, not for progression, but for finding happiness is important. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that as you explore to create something like through music or through art, like any craft that you want to get into um, it's always the first step that's kind of um, you know scary because people like we were always you should think like failures like once you get after that and once you keep doing it even on days that you don't really want to put you 100% but you just keep doing it as, as a routine as a habit then it gets better definitely being able to take that leap and just dive in because the more often you do it, the more it will be consistent and build into a good habit. Before we cap off, hey, do you have any last thoughts you would like to share with the audience? You are in your own time frame. You are the master of your own ship, controlling your own fate. So definitely don't dive into this hole of like comparing yourself to another person and being like a calm, like a vicious cycle of despair. Just trusting yourself and keep working towards your goals. And with that, we conclude our episode of Young Entrepreneurs with the Green Roof Team. Special thanks to your sponsors, the SIU Research Park, Energy at SIU, SIU Sustainability Office's Green Fund Grant, the University Innovation Fellows, CH Electrical, Entertech, RAS Coatings, AES Solar, Sprex Supply Group, H&F Visions, Silvix Forestry and Nursery, Nether Chance Studios, Climate Economy Action Network, and many more. And please visit our website for more information and follow us on social media. Stay sustainable, folks.